scheduled is ready to launch about 52 minutes from now at 3.52 p.m. Central Time or 3.52 a.m. Kazakhstan Time. Aboard our Soyuz Commander and Expedition 22 Flight Engineer Oleg Kotov, NASA Flight Engineer T.J. Creamer, and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency or JAXA Flight Engineer Suichi Noguchi. The Soyuz capsule was mated to its booster three days ago, and the Soyuz rocket, which stands 162 feet tall and weighs 680,000 pounds, was transported by rail car to the launch pad at dawn on Friday. That launch pad is the same one used more than 48 years ago to support the launch of Yuri Gagarin, the first human in space, on April 12, 1961. Once launched, Kotov as the Soyuz commander and Noguchi as the onboard Soyuz flight engineer will oversee several orbital correction burns using thrusters on the spacecraft to adjust its altitude relative to that of the International Space Station. After docking and hatch opening, the new crew will join the current crew, Expedition 22 Commander Jeff Williams and Flight Engineer Max Sarayev, and all five will then consist of Expedition 22. Numbers for Soyuz 52, sir. Williams and Sarayev have been aboard the station since October 2nd, with the scheduled return to Earth in mid-March aboard their Soyuz TMA-16. One first-time flyer and two spaceflight veterans are making up this Soyuz crew to the International Space Station. NASA astronaut T.J. Kramer is a 50-year-old United States Army colonel and will be making his first flight to the space station aboard the Soyuz vehicle today. Kramer holds a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Loyola College, a master's degree in physics from MIT, and is a distinguished Army aviator. He was assigned to NASA at the Johnson Space Center in July of 1995 as a space shuttle vehicle in integration test engineer and selected as an astronaut in 1998. Creamer has served as a crew support astronaut for the Expedition 3 crew and represented the astronaut office on station hardware integration, information technologies, and robotics before being assigned to a space station expedition crew. This will be Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kotov's second trip to the International Space Station and his second trip aboard a Soyuz. Kotov, a 44-year-old Russian Air Force colonel and medical doctor, first launched the station aboard Soyuz Team A-10 in April of 2007 as a member of the Expedition 15 crew, along with fellow cosmonaut Fyodor Yurchikin and spaceflight participant Charles Simonyi. Kotov performed two Russian-based spacewalks while on board the station, the first to install service module debris protection panels on Zvezda and rerouting, rerouting a GPS antenna cable. His second spacewalk involved installing a section of Ethernet cable on the Zarya module, additional debris protection panels on Zvezda, and the deploy deployment of a Russian scientific experiment called BioRisk. This will be JAXA astronaut Suichi Noguchi's second trip to the station and his first trip aboard a Soyuz. In July of 2005, Noguchi served as a mission specialist in Spacewalker on STS-114, the return to flight mission, during which the shuttle docked with the International Space Station and the crew tested and evaluated new procedures for flight safety and shuttle inspection and repair techniques. Noguchi, along with fellow Spacewalker Steve Robinson, performed three spacewalks on that mission to demonstrate the repair techniques on the shuttle's protective tiles, replace a failed control moment gyroscope on the station, and install an external stowage platform, and remove a protruding gap filler from the underside of Discovery. This mission launches under the call sign Pulsar, a pulsing star, and it is the same call sign used by Kotov on his first Soyuz launch to the station. The talisman you will see hanging over the commander's seat during ascent is a toy black cat that Kotov's daughter gave to him and also the same one carried to the station with him aboard Soyuz TMA-10. In the last couple of hours, some of the countdown milestones have included activation of systems for health checks of the radio communications, thermal control, and motion control systems. Now about 47 minutes from the launch of the Soyuz, Observing launch preparations at Baikonur is a NASA contingent 
that includes Public Affairs Officer Rob Navius, who has been at the launch site since Thursday, and he filed this report a short time ago. For the first time since December 2nd, 1990, a Soyuz spacecraft is poised to lift off in the month of December from this barren launch site in Kazakhstan. In the bone-chilling cold, the Soyuz TMA-17 is ready to carry Oleg Kotov, NASA's TJ Creamer, and Japanese astronaut Soichi Noguchi on a pre-dawn ride to the International Space Station. This is the first time a Japanese astronaut has been launched in a Soyuz spacecraft to the International Space Station and has drawn tremendous attention in Japan, with some three dozen Japanese journalists on hand to document a part of spaceflight history. Kotov, a Soyuz commander, is strapped into the center seat of the TMA-17, flanked on his left by Noguchi, who is the board engineer for today's launch, and ride to orbit, and on his right by Creamer, the only first-time flyer on the crew. The trio have been in Baikonur since December 9th, reviewing their flight plans, exercising and relaxing as they completed their final preparations for launch. They conducted a variety of ceremonial activities during their two weeks here, including the raising of U.S., Russian, Japanese, and Kazakh flags at the Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters, the planting of trees behind the Cosmonaut Hotel, and a tour of a museum near the launch site next to the small cottages that the chief designer, Sergei Koryov, and the first human to fly in space, Yuri Gagarin, slept in on the night before Gagarin's historic launch almost a half century ago. Here, today, in the Central Asian desert in Kazakhstan, the crew is running through its pre-launch checklists as they await liftoff in less than an hour. This enormous launch complex lies to the north of the railway junction town of Tiratam, east of the Aral Sea. Work on the Cosmodrome began more than a half century ago in 1955, when the Soviet military required that test facilities be constructed to accommodate ballistic missile testing well away from U.S. Air Force surveillance posts in Turkey. After launch, the Soyuz capsules climb to orbit will be monitored through a series of tracking stations in the region, stretching from here in Baikonur all the way east of Vladivostok, Russia, located about 100 kilometers east of the Chinese border. NASA is represented in Baikonur today by the Associate Administrator for Space Operations, Bill Gerstenmeier, and the Chief of the Astronaut Office at the Johnson Space Center, former Expedition Commander Peggy Whitson. JAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, is represented by Kuniaki Shiraki, the JAXA ISS Program Manager, and the Russian Federal Space Agency is represented by its head, Anatoly Permanov. Another multinational moment in space history about to be written as we shiver and await the launch of the Soyuz TMA-17 en route to the International Space Station. With that, from our remote location here at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, a half a world away, we send it back to you at Mission Control in Houston. Thanks to Rob for that report from the launch site. We're now T-minus 43 minutes and 23 seconds to the launch of the Soyuz spacecraft. The crew was awakened about 7.21 a.m. Central Time this morning, about eight and a half hours prior to launch. The crew members then participated in final traditional and required pre-launch activities. Before departing their crew quarters, the three crew members observed a long-standing tradition of autographing the doors to the rooms they stayed in at the Cosmonaut Hotel. Soyuz Commander Oleg Kotov was first up to sign his door. Should I put 21 or 20 seconds? <laughs> 20. <laughs> 20 dash 23. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so you flight engineer, JAXA astronaut Suichi Noguchi was next up to sign the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 